Today I'm going to show you a new function in Excel that lets you get historical stock information. You can get daily, weekly, and monthly information so you can easily take a look at the stock trend, how the prices are developing over time, for example. Now all of this requires a simple function, but I'm going to twist it a little bit so you can get a report that looks like this, where we can see the trend of multiple stocks in one view. Before we get started though, a brief thanks to Alchemy J for sponsoring today's video. They recently launched their latest addition to their portfolio. It's called the Alchemy J Excel Library. And just to tell you quickly what it is, it's an Excel add-in that provides over 90 extended functions to Excel to accomplish different tasks. Now, best of all, this Excel library is available to download for free. You can find the download link in the description of this video. Now, I'm going to chat more about them towards the end, so stay tuned for that. Now, let's analyze the stock trends I picked to see which are rising and which are falling. Okay, so I've already added the ticker symbol for the companies I want to analyze here. Two important points, though, before we get started. Number one, Stock History is currently available in the beta channel, so it's not generally available for everyone yet who's on Office 365, but if you stay patient, it will become available as long as you have Excel for Microsoft 365. Number two, you're probably wondering which exchanges are currently supported. Well, I have the link here. It's also available in the description of this video. It's going to take you to this Microsoft support page, and it tells you which exchanges are currently covered. So if you scroll down, for example, you can see that India is covered. Okay, so now that we have these important points covered, let me show you how stock history works. Once we understand this function better, then we're gonna create this report where we showed the historical trend of prices in front of each company. And we're also gonna show a mini line chart in each cell so we can take a look at the trend in one place. The function you need to get historical stock information is called stock history. What you need is the stock. This is the ticker symbol. Now you can type it in inside quotation marks or you just do a cell reference. In this case, I have it in the cell, so I'm gonna reference it. Next, you need the start date. There are different ways you can give it the date. You can reference a date that's sitting in a cell. You can type in a date as text. So for example, let's go with 1-8-2020. If you don't give it an end date or any other information, what's going to happen is that the end date is going to be your start date. Notice the function spelled, it created two columns automatically. One is called date and the other is the closing price. All I had to do is type in a single function in this cell and everything else came automatically with. Now let's see the other parameters that we can add here. So for end date, we can go with the today function. So today bracket open bracket close. And then we have the interval. By default, it's daily. So you get the daily closing price returned. But you can also take a look at this weekly or monthly by just changing it to a one or a two. I'm just gonna go with zero for daily. Next is whether you wanna have a header or not. So default is to show the header, but if I go with no header, let me just show you what happens. I'm gonna leave the formula right now. So the bracket is closed, press enter, and those headers that I had for date and price, they disappear. But now I have daily information all the way to today's date. Okay, so now let's go back up and change this to a one. When I press enter, I get the headers in there. So what other choices do we have? Where well, all of these properties here are different things that you can retrieve. So zero is for date. So that's the date column here. One is close. And remember, these were the defaults. So if I want more than just that, so if I go with zero, one, and let's say I also want to get the high, so that's a three, and I also want to get the volume, that's a five. I'm just going to type these numbers in, and then when I press enter, I get the information that I requested using these indexes. 
if I want to have this on a weekly or a monthly basis instead, I just have to go to the correct place. So interval was right here and I can change this to a two. Let's go with monthly. Okay, so this is how stock history works. Now, what I prefer to do instead of typing the dates in like this and hard coding them in, I prefer to either use the date function, which is more flexible here. We can give it the year, month and day. And you also don't run into problems if you're sharing your workbooks with people with different regional settings and languages. Another advantage of using the date function is that you can also reference cells for the different parameters. So here I would type this as 2020, month one and day would be eight. I close the bracket, press enter, everything works, but I can also use cell references instead of typing it in like this. Now, if you already have your date somewhere in a cell, you can also reference that. So for example, for our stocks here, let's say we wanna go two years back and we wanna get monthly information. Let's first calculate the date that corresponds to two years ago, starting from today's date. So we're going to be flexible and connect it to today's date. Well, one function I can use here is the edate function. All it needs is a start date. So that's going to be the today function with bracket open, bracket closed, and the number of months I want to go back. So I'm going to go with minus 24 close bracket, press enter, and that's my date. It's showing it as a number. I'm gonna change it to a short date instead. Now this is gonna be my starting date here, but I'm in this cell, I cannot change it. Notice the formula is grayed out. I have to go to the top left corner, and now I can change this reference and reference this cell instead. And then when I press enter, I get all this stock information for the past two years all the way to today. And this is monthly information now. In case I'm just interested in date and close, I can get rid of these additional parameters. I think that's the last two and enter and I just have these. If you're getting errors, make sure that your ticker symbol is correct. And in case you want your data from another exchange, you can add it in before the ticker symbol. So by default, the stock exchange that's used is the NASDAQ one, but you can change it here. So let's say I want to get the Wiener Börse. I'm going to go with XWBO, add a colon, and then add the Microsoft ticker symbol and I get everything back in Euro from the Wiener Börse, okay, which is in Austria. Okay, so I'm gonna go with Control Z to reverse that. Okay, so, so far so good. Now that we understand how the stock history symbol works, let's bring in the historical stock information for the past two years on a monthly basis for all of these and put them in front of each of these companies. The problem here is that the function spills vertically. I want to have everything horizontally. Now to be able to put everything horizontally and to make sure that the closing price is corresponding to the correct date, we have to make sure that we're working with identical dates for these stocks. In this case, because I'm working with monthly stock information, they're going to be identical. So if I, for example, let's just copy this and compare this with the Google one. I'm going to paste the formula in here and just drag this to Google, press enter. And now I get the Google historical stock prices on a monthly basis. So notice the dates here are identical. So now all I actually have to do is to transpose this information. So let's put this inside the transpose function and see what we get. When I press enter, I get date and I get the closing for, in this case, it's for Microsoft. I'm getting close, but I want my formula in a way that I can just drag it out and have it apply to the rest as well. So let's just bring this closer. Remember in the last arguments here, I can define the parameters that I want. So this one here, the zero is for date. If I don't show the date, I'm just going to hide that. Instead, just show the closing. That's the one. 
right? That's the one here. When I press enter, I just get the closing. Remember, there was also the parameter on whether I want to show headers or not. That was this one. So I'm going to go with no header, which is a zero. So now when I press enter, I just have the prices for Microsoft. This means I can actually drag my formula down once I make sure I fixed the right cell references. So A3 here, that should be a relative reference because I want to drag it down. I want it to come down, but A1 should be an absolute reference. I'm going to press F4 and fix that. The rest is fine. So when I press enter, I can drag this down and I have the historical stock prices all in one place. So let's just make sure that the cells are wide enough to show our numbers. What's missing though are my dates. I don't want to hard code these. I want these to be dynamic as well. So can I just copy this? Let's paste it up here. I'm going to leave this on Microsoft. It doesn't really matter which of these stocks I have. Ultimately, I just want to show the dates here and not the closing price. So remember here, instead of one, I'm going to go with a zero. Now, does this work? When I press enter, it doesn't work because it doesn't just give dates back. It needs to give dates back with the closing, with the volume or with something else. But currently, it just doesn't give dates back on its own. So this means I have to add something else here. But in this case, I can't, right? I get the spill error because it's going to give me two rows. I already have information here. Well, if you just want one part of it back, you can put this inside the index function. The array is this. Then we just have to tell it what row number to return. I want everything in the first row because that's where my date is. And my column, well, I want to return every single column. So I just have to close the bracket, press enter, and I get my dates back, right? So all I did was to put this inside the index function and use the row argument one to get the first row back. Okay, so, so far, so good. I'm going to put these in bold. Okay, so as the last step, I want to show the trend for each of these stocks. So let's make the cells a little bit wider so we can see the trend better. Now, all I need to do is go to insert and add a sparkline to it. I'll go with the line sparkline. My data range is this one and the location that's fine. And I have the sparkline. The great thing with the sparkline is that it acts just like a formula. I can drag this down and each of these is referencing this range right here. Now I can also make adjustments to this. Go to sparkline, adjust the sparkline color if you want, the weight, so the size of the line. I'll just make it slightly thicker. I also want to add a marker color for the high point. So let's go with a green here and let's go with a red color for the low points. Okay, so I can quickly see which stocks are rising and which ones are falling. Now, if you're using the stock data types, which is something that we saw in a previous video. So if I go to data here, we have the stock data types. I can convert these to official stocks. Everything works as before. So you can work with stock data types or you can just work with text by typing in the ticker symbol manually here. If you're interested to find out more about the stock data types, check out that previous video. I'm going to add the link to the description as well. As you can see, it's really easy to get historical stock info into Excel and organize it in the way that you need. Now, I have a question for you. Do you work a lot with big numbers, with databases, JSON and XML? If you do, and you'd like to use your familiar Excel environment to work with these, then Alchemy J's Excel library can help you. It was created to fill in the gaps of what's missing in Excel in this respect. Now, usually you'd have to write your own VBA code to overcome Excel's limitations, but with this Excel add-in, you get additional functions so you don't have to code it yourself. For example, this function here, 
counts the number of times a pattern occurs in a string using regular expression. It can search a range of cells across multiple rows and columns. The function returns how often it found a pattern in the selected range. The Alchemy JXL library also has a range of functions for large numbers to overcome Excel's precision limitation of 15 digits. For instance, with this function, you can compare two large numbers. If the result is one, it means the first number is larger than the second one. Otherwise, it's gonna return minus one if the second one is larger or zero if the numbers are equal. Now, there are many more handy functions like these in Alchemy J's Excel library. Check it out if you're interested. The link is in the description of this video. Let me know what you think about it. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video.